We just need to keep telling our story. We need to keep going with this diet that we know is life-changing. You remember that famous Gandhi quote? Feels odd quoting Gandhi in defense of the carnivore diet, but the principle is very powerful. He said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Hello, friends. It's the Carnivore Rabbi here, as always, to meet, pray, and love. About 30 years ago, there was a movie called Wag the Dog. Perhaps some of you saw it. It was about the way a president got out of his political troubles by starting a war. He gets the people scared and angry and then amasses political popular support for going to war and distracting from his real issues, his real problems. This is a time-tested technique. By the way, I think it was Dustin Hoffman in that movie. This is a time-tested technique using fear as a distraction, directing people's attention to where you want it to go so you can serve your own agenda, an unspoken agenda. It's hidden. He wants, the president wants, the people not focused on his political troubles, so he directs them to fear a supposed foreign enemy. This same technique, using fear as a distraction to serve an agenda, happens all the time, and it happens a lot in the world of nutrition. I remember when keto started getting popular. We saw lots of fear mongers, stories talking about the dangers of being in ketosis for too long. Oh, it increases your cortisol. Oh, it's too much fat for our bodies to handle. Oh, you might get into ketoacidosis. Oh, it's too much protein. Oh, you're going to get so constipated without any fiber. Now, all of those may be legitimate things to discuss, but what's often not stated is who is fomenting these fears. Who is encouraging these stories to be published? Who pays the advertising for the magazines that publish it? It's usually some vested interests. Think about it. Who wants us to fear the keto diet? The big food companies, the pharmaceutical companies, the nutrition industry as it's currently constituted, the one that promotes the Mediterranean diet and then their own diet plans and supplements. And the more popular a new diet or approach gets, the more fear-provoking stories will start to appear. The same thing, by the way, happens in a small scale on YouTube. I actually love it when I get negative comments because I know it means my videos are getting attention. It's if a new diet gets attention, it's getting through to the masses. If a video gets some negative attention, it's getting through. And by the way, help me spread this message of carnivore by hitting the subscribe button. It just, it helps so much and I'm so grateful to all of you who already are subscribing. So now back to carnivore. It is becoming more popular. As I said a few weeks ago, carnivore diet searches on Google Trends recently surpassed keto diet searches. And surprise, we are starting to see more stories about the dangers of the carnivore diet. I mentioned the one we saw in the New York Times last week. And I saw another story, I couldn't believe it, it published by Harvard. It's in, I think it was in the Harvard Health, Health News. And this is what it said. By skipping fruits and vegetables, people on the carnivore diet lo likely won't get enough fiber in their diets, which can affect gut health. They will also miss out on carotenoids and polyphenols, Substances with antioxidant properties that have been linked to lower risk of chronic disease, such as type 2 diabetes and some types of cancer. Oh, you're going to get cancer. Animal products also contain high amounts of saturated fat and cholesterol. Oh, big cholesterol fear. We all knew that was coming. In addition to the potentially adverse health effects of the diet, Walter Willett, professor of epidemiology and nutrition, at Harvard, noted that industrial production of animal-based foods is harmful to the planet. That I agree on a little bit. Not the harmful to the planet, but I don't think the industrial production is the best. Here's what Willett writes. There's also the issue of justice, oh, the environmental scare, that basically the global north, 
Europe and the United States caused most of the problems with climate change that we have today. And this sort of perpetuates that. So the carnivore diet is perpetuating climate change. This is the ultimate argument. I don't want to get into the politics of climate change, but there are so many good answers to all of these issues. For all these reasons, Walter Willett says, the carnivore diet sounds like a basically terrible idea. This is fear-mongering at its worst. We know, we've heard all these arguments before, but this little snippet from the Harvard Nutrition News really summarizes it. And by the way, Walter Willett has a lot of ethical issues of his own. Suffice it to say that he uses his bully, or he uses his position at Harvard to attack and bully anyone or any study who disagrees with his agenda, which is largely vegan and plant-based. So what do we do with all this criticism? I think we address it, and then we just keep on doing what we're doing. In fact, we address it lightly. We're not going to change the minds of the people with their own agenda. We're not going to change Walter Willett's minds. We know that the media is going to pick up on the one in 1,000 of a person who gets terribly sick as a carnivore. It's rare, but on any diet, any issues, there are always going to be some people that have issues. But the media will pick the one out of 1,000, and that will be represented by the media as typical of all carnivores. So we just need to keep telling our story. We need to keep going with this diet that we know is life-changing. You remember that famous Gandhi quote? Feels odd quoting Gandhi in defense of the carnivore diet, but the principle is very powerful. He said, first, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. Then you win. That absolutely fits the carnivore diet. It may still be in the ignore stage, but it's getting out of the ignore stage. Then people start to laugh at it. They think it's absolutely crazy. Then, as we're starting to see, they fight it, say how awful and dangerous it is. And then we win. And we win. We win when people realize that this is the proper human diet. And this is the way we are meant to eat and nourish ourselves.